Much like a faulty GPS unit, this show was all over the map. Let's talk about it, shall we? I'm John Renton with my review, WWE, NXT, White and Gold. We're steamrolling closer towards NXT Halloween Havoc, which will hopefully be less goofy than the last couple editions, but nevertheless, certainly can't be any worse than Hulk Hogan vs. Warrior 2. Electric, why the fuck did Hogan think a fireball was a good idea? Boogaloo. If you've never seen WCW Halloween Havoc 1998, seriously, check it out. It's a train wreck, and then a train wreck, and it's capped off by one of the best Goldberg matches of his career, thanks to DDP. But we're here to talk about NXT White and Gold. There are some decent moments on this show. I do want to ask the question once again. What has happened to this once proud brand that used to feature some pretty good wrestling and now just features a bunch of cartoonish bullshit? Yeah, they toned down the Paper Mario Color Splash background, but... Some of these gimmicks, it's just, it's like they just threw shit at the wall to see what stuck. <laughs> it is a new era, sort of, for NXT commentary. Vic Joseph and Booker T on commentary. Booker T literally just says whatever is on his mind, even though I don't think that mind has really worked in over a decade. Booker T is a character. He also says some outlandish shit that he probably shouldn't say, because even though he's a veteran, I think sometimes he does have his head up his own ass, especially when it comes to... Comments he makes about certain talents um, of this generation. And while he's trained some of them, Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red dress, Roxanne Perez, put on the... Anyway, she, you know, she was trained by him and others. Let's be honest, Booker T's a little bit weird. He was also very, very weird during this show. And it started off with Steiner versus Javier Bernal. Javi the Body, I believe is what he calls himself. He tried to take it to Steiner. It didn't work. The shaved Ewok, J.D. Ewok Dunna, showed up, and he was on commentary. God help us. Look, the guy, I'm amazed they found a headset for his goddamn head because he's got a giant, bulbous, Easter island size head. Actually, that's unfair. Easter Island heads are actually made to scale. J.D. Shaved Walk Igana looks exactly like, you know, an inflated Easter Island statue. Nevertheless, Steiner wins easily. Javier Bernal isn't bad, but Steiner had to win easily. And then here's Elia. Do, 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 do. This isn't me making fun of him. He is going to have a seizure doing that. Elia Dragunov is a tremendous talent. <laughs> had two of the best matches that I've seen in the last number of years in WWE when he faced off in that empty arena match on NXT UK television in, Oct I believe, it was October of 2020. Oct September, October of 2020. When him and Walter at the time, now Gunther, just beat the holy hell tar out of each other. And then they had the rematch at NXT TakeOver 36. The last TakeOver before they decided to go to 2.0 and it's just been downhill ever since. Ely is great. He is great. He takes himself seriously and even though you would think somebody <clears throat> that... The facial expressions he makes wouldn't actually work on a lot of people. They work on him because he's believable and he's... A freaking just <clears throat> bull that will just run at you. And then we have the shaved Ewok getting in on this. And Ilya accidentally lays out Steiner. So that plays into something a little bit later. St. Elbow's Fire has a pre-tape on Mandalore's. I'm very sorry, but I need subtitles on top of subtitles for St. Elbow's Fire. Because, don't get me wrong, talented, beautiful, and she's driven. That accent's really thick. And I watch a lot of <coughs> Scottish, British, Welsh, Irish horror movies. Whatever. It is what it is. Sometimes maybe it's not the worst idea to have managers is all I'm going to say. And speaking of managers, somebody need to manage this match. Mega Man Frazier versus Axiom Verge. Best of three. The winner advances to the, in the final spot of the North American title ladder match. That was a mouthful. I'm not even sure it made sense. <coughs> Both these guys can work. The Axiom Verge entrance is stupid. Mega Man Frazier, I call him that because of the Quick Man style bars in his intro. That is a deep cut if you are <clears throat> not an original NES fan. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Also, if you've never played any of the Mega Man games, get on that. Play the good ones, i.e. don't really play the 3D one. So anyway, there was a hamstring popping moment. Like where Frazier just landed on the, tried to do a Rana and then got you crotched on the ropes and out. That looked brutal. I'm going to say one thing though that I hate about this match, even though Frazier I think has potential in Axiom Verge, despite the stupid gimmick <coughs> and the stupid name Axiom, or as Booker said, Axum. It's 
says why Booker should not be on commentary. Because he can't really, he, he can't make sense of anything. Also, before I get to that, they mentioned his best of five series against John Cena. Why didn't you mention the best of seven, which is actually a best of eight series in WCW over the TV championship, or the best of five, or I think it was seven, for the U.S. championship in late 05, early 06, over the, you know, because Randy Orton, um, Randy Orton actually just subbed in for that to face off against the opponent. Why didn't you mention those two? All oh, right. Because they featured, you know, family murderer Chris Benoit. That's right. That's right. So, great. The catalog of matches destroyed because a guy just had to snap and kill his family and be a vicious murderer. Nevertheless, the car crash spots, the no-selling was getting ridiculous. The no-selling, and it's in NXT, <clears throat> it's in WWE, it's in AEW, it's in New Japan, it's on the indies. Look, you do whatever the hell you want. Bumps are hard to take. I <clears throat> just know from talking to even indie wrestlers, it's hard. It's hard to land on that mat constantly, regardless of the ring. The no-selling just makes it seem like, oh, anybody can do this. Just pop up and do whatever, which I'm sure it hurts. There was a cool superplex spot, except then it went right into a choke. So no-selling. And we get fistings of plenty, more on fistings later, and we get a trap pin, one, two, three, so Mega Man Frazier advances. Not bad, but I just hate the no-selling, regardless of who's doing it. Mackenzie was dressed for 80s night. It's the 80s, do a lot of coke, and both for Ronald Reagan. So Elia says to Waller, why are you wearing your grandma's sunglasses? It's because he, he put ketchup in his eyes last week, so he has hindsight. Um... Ely is going to take on Wall uh, Waller in the main event. And in Sangha's with Valentina Faraz. Yes, I'm totally with you. I will absolutely be in your corner. And he says, I'll see you out there. Apollo then is uh, riding next to a giant, throbbing, very big monument. Um, <clears throat> there's, I don't know where the fuck he was. <clears throat> but never. I don't know why he would decide to just be next to a giant, throbbing monument. I don't know what his gimmick's supposed to be. He also got Chucky in his vision. Oh, great. We're going back to WCW 1998. God, that was a weird year. So, Valentina Faraz with Sangha took on Indy. Veer came for Sangha again. Second week in a row, he came for Sangha. When you come for a man twice, you better make sure that he goes with you. Don't ask me how I know anything about that. And Sangha leaves. So, they're reforming into Cher. Why didn't they just call him up to the main roster? <laughs> the NXT tag division is pretty much dead. Call him up to the main roster and do something with him. Valentina fights back. She's not bad. She's not great. She did hit a nice um, double knee spot and a drop kick for two. <laughs> Indy, after that springboard elbow, I guess, I can't remember if she messed it up or if somebody got accidentally injured, but it, while it was beautifully done, it's good she goes with this, a deadlift superplex, and there you go. One, two, three. Good. Utilize more moves like that. Bring back stuff like where a DDT can be a finisher. <laughs> and you know, superplexes, and do something where it actually can work. And Indy's strong and stout enough. She is very powerful and can do that, you know, not just to Valentina, but to others. So she can pull this off. And in Pretty Deadly Glory is there, dressed up like, you know, redneck football fans, because we need more evidence that the NXT tag division is basically on life support. And it's going to be a three-way next week. Or actually next. Would have been next week, except they just, just decided to say, ah, hell with it, we need another match. Mackenzie was talking to Cora. Um, Cora says, Roxanne has no friends. Mackenzie says, actually, she's going to be going to SmackDown. Cora says, fine, I'll be going to Raw. She actually says that later. And she says, do you have Ronda Rousey's phone number? Oh, no. And then Cora leaves, maybe gets 10 feet away. And Mackenzie says, I actually do have Ronda's phone number. Hopefully you don't talk about, you know, Sandy Hook and everything, because otherwise she'll tell you the vast majority of of why it was a hoax. Fuck Ronda Rousey for that. We get Idris Inofe and Malik Blade against Briggs and Jensen with Fallon Henley, my goodness, and Jägermeister and Fowler with Joe Wayne Gacy. Three-way contenders match. Inofe and Blade aren't bad. Actually, they might be the standout team as far as like new teams that have bubbled up. Briggs and Jensen are okay. The Grizzled Hung veterans were soon to be rectimized. They are not my favorite team, but God, they were doing better than this. At one point, Grimes just, you know, shows up, caves in Joe Wayne Gacy outside, and then roll up on, I think it was Jägermeister. One, two, three. Idris and Ophi and Malik Blade win. They will face Pretty Deadly Glory. Please beat Pretty Deadly Glory. Strap Idris and Ophi and Malik Blade. Just strap them up. Strap them up and strap them on and keep going. There's no way that clip can be taken out of context. 
So, good for them, though. Good for them. I like uh, They have definitely made the most of their TV time, and I'm glad they're being rewarded. JC, Jane, my goodness, my, my goodness, my God. JC, Jane is a goddamn national treasure, and I will not be told otherwise. <laughs> Keanu James and her assistant. I have seen this movie before. Seriously, they are making the jokes too easy. And Keanu James has a great look. And I mean a great look. And looks like she could lift the world. I mean that with respect. Don't know anything about her assistant. Something about Chase University and plans to help expand it. Why is she... I don't know what's going on with this. I also don't know what was going on with the next match. J.C. Jane. Again, national treasure. I want to say national treasure. J.C. Jane. Um, well, the National Treasure actually is, um, Nick Aldis's name, so, hmm, I'll come up with another nickname. Come up with a uh, familiar or a better nickname in the comments, please. <laughs> JC Jane taking on St. Elbow's Fire! GG interfered. JC just, you know, making the most of her TV time. She's great. She, she's a fucking standout. And this, this was the match was fine. It was a way for St. Elbow's Fire to get over, and she got over with a gory bomb. And then... She's going back, and suddenly a mysterious person in a hood <clears throat> um, starts attacking St. Elbow's Fire. And it's Sonya with her suit right underneath the hooded jacket. That made me laugh for whatever reason. And then we got a three-on-one fisting, and Sonya was ready to just get right in there. And she's there because apparently, and this is somebody, <clears throat> somebody told me this, shout out to Valena on Twitter. Uh, Mandy Rose's brother apparently passed away. Terrible. Take all the time she needs. Terrible to lose a sibling. Terrible to lose anybody that you're close to, blood related or not. And hopefully Mandy can grieve, take the time that she needs. For now, Sony is in there. They explain why in a little bit of a promo later. <laughs> um, and they shield bomb um, St. Elbow's Fire through the table. Because they really have to rush this because Halloween Havoc is in, what, two weeks? Is it two weeks? Or is it three weeks? I think it's, well, it would have to actually be two weeks now that I think about it, because Halloween is coming up in 20 days. So anyway, um, why does Joe Wayne Gacy have the shield camera? Who is the hooded person? Somebody said it was Ava Rain, who is Rock's daughter. Thank you very much for telling me her name. Pre-tape on with Grandma Stark and Nikita Lyons. Trading insurrection stories, no doubt. Hank Waller, or Hank Walker, rather, and Quint what was Quincy wearing on his head? Genuine question. And security, we're talking. Unlikely tag team for whatever reason. Whatever, I have to have, doesn't matter. Wesley took on Stax. Stax wants revenge because Tony D'Angelo got injured. He blames Wesley. <laughs> Wesley had been staying in the ring, by the way, for about 10 minutes by this point. A few of those things had happened after Wesley made his entrance. They got to work on that, especially for a live show. A tape show, I understand. A live show, that's bullshit. Um... <clears throat> Wesley wins. Stax isn't bad, but Wesley wins. Tricky Tiki Williams and Carmelo Hayes attack, and then Oro and the Blind Forest attack. And there you go. Oro Mensa, I think, is his name. Um, <clears throat> but Oro and the Blind Forest is funnier. And Oro can work. But we're likely going to have a tag match next week that's going to end in a big old schmoz. <clears throat> Sonia was in Toxic Attraction's box, and she says that she's here to help, that her and Mandy have differences, but they're still friends. And she challenges St. Elbow's Fire to a match next week. And then Roderick Strong was in a neck brace being uh, wheeled out by Ivy Nile, who apparently is his nurse. Insert your jokes here. And the creeds are there. And this was some of the most bullshit, fake, phone I hate using the word fake, even about ridiculous stuff in wrestling. Because there's nothing fake about what they do to their bodies in wrestling. But this was fake on the surface. It was fake in the verbiage. It was so fake, so terrible. And the creeds have made the most of any of these bullshit dime, diamond mine, uh, you know, vignettes, you know, pre-tapes, whatever, and they're great in the ring. They are not polished, but they're great in the ring. Strong is great in the ring. Strong is not great on promos. Strong should not talk, ever. His wife shouldn't talk, but, you know, it's Marina Shafir, but we don't know her. That was grounds for a, a goddamn firing, Marina Shafir's promo. Anyway, this was terrible. It was something about, oh, we're going to get back at Damon Kemp, and we're going to put him in an ambulance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Some of the, go back and watch this if you dare. It actually will make any Hallmark movies that have nothing but white people. Isn't it great how there's only white people in that universe? And terrible. Absolutely terrible. Some of the worst acting is, again, why Roger Strong should not talk. 
So Keanu James took on Thea Hale, but Robert Stone interrupted because he didn't like being slammed by an 18-year-old girl last week. Um, and then proceeds to sound like an 18-year-old girl that hadn't hit puberty yet <clears throat> on promos. He was embarrassed while wearing overalls that looked like they were from a discount hee-haw set. But then she backdrops him, a pretty good backdrop, because Robert Stone was a worker before, as Robbie E. And then Keanu James beats uh, Thea Hale really quick, tops her one, two, three, wish Keanu would top. Moving on from that, Keanu James is a talented, beautiful woman. And let's be honest, I think anybody would be lucky to have her. But she has the potential, despite this gimmick being very silly and almost Cinemax after dark-like, and uh, uh, at least according to what I've heard. I've never actually seen any of those movies. How dare you accuse me of that? She has potential. But she beats her pretty quickly. Stax is uh, talked to by Tony D'Angelo. Well, hey, I told you to get out the apron. I got injured. You're going to face somebody next week. Who? I'll tell you who. You'll know when their music hits. And apparently he blew out his PCL. Hopefully Tony D'Angelo will be back soon. He's already on crutches at back at TV, so I imagine he'll be back soon. And <clears throat> then Robert Stone's freaking out. People are laughing at him. Who gave Von Wagner permission to talk? Whoever did needs to be fired immediately. Because Von Wagner literally looks like he's trying to force the words out, just like he forces his, you know, um, Geico caveman skull out. And I will say that the lobotomized zebra trying to operate a ladder and trying to figure out how a ladder works and trying to spell ladder will actually be hilarious. Cameron Grimes has friends. Who are his friends? We'll find out next week. And then Cora Jade interrupts uh, 1980s Mackenzie Mitchell and says, You're not going away. Roxanne's going to SmackDown fine. Rhea wants me to go in raw. I think that's what she said. I might have misinterpreted that. But it's going to be a pick your poison thing. So I imagine Roxanne's probably going to get <coughs> Natty and Cora's going to get Rhea. I mean, I guess. I, possibly. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, and then Ely Dragunov took on Grayson Waller and Waller in a main event. No, no. I, I don't care how insufferably good he is in the ring. I don't like Grayson Waller. He's annoying and not annoying and i want to see him get beat up like i don't want to see this guy on my television eventually the spin the wheel make the deal thing scares waller after some of the lights go out and i don't know how nobody knows the wheel was there especially since waller was staring at the stage even like a minute before they must have had it covered in a sheet oh sheet Ilya hits a few german suplexes hits the torpedo one two three and steiner comes out spears him and that's it that's it for that so there you go. That is the end of NXT White and Gold for this week. Let's see what happens <coughs> over the next couple of weeks. And then let's see what happens on the last Saturday of the month when Halloween Havoc happens. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.